This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 1675, Justice League Movie Review. Alright, welcome to the show. I'm Brian Christman. I'm Shane Kelly. I'm Adam Murdo. Right, and we're, again, in our effort to keep things more or less up to date, we're, do, we're doing another relatively recent movie review, like we did with Thor Ragnarok, uh, this time for Justice League that just came out this past weekend. I even broke my own rule, and I went to a Friday night, 7 p.m. show. Yeah, I saw your, your text. It's like, wait yep. a minute, because I, I went to the 4 o'clock showing at was the IMAX. I beat you both. I went on Thursday I night. even saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, That yeah, was yeah. impressive. I couldn't believe that. The only, the only time I had time. That, to go. That's the same here. That was the only time I couldn't go Thursday, and my Saturday and Sunday was completely booked from dawn till midnight. I could not get out any other way, and I wanted to make sure I could do the show, and I wanted to see Justice League. Sure. 7 p.m. on Friday night. All right. It was pretty tame. Not as much craziness as I was that I normally encounter at a movie theater for Friday night, date night, and all uh-huh, the uh-huh. kids and uh, get the hell out of the way. <laughs> Cut off my lawn. Oh, my God, yeah. That's why I go uh, to the 10 I, o'clock show. I, I had my fist all ready, man, to, to <laughs> start cut off my lawn. Uh, I was, was ready. Was there a shillelagh clutched in it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but? Brad, Brad sat in front of me. Oh, yeah. Brad and his kids. Now, I was by myself. Um, I couldn't get anybody to go with me because of their scheduling, but yeah. So that was kind of neat to see him nice. talk for him for a few minutes. All right. And we hope to be joined momentarily by Mr. Chris Eberly. Mm-hmm. So hang on for that. Um, but first, a word from our sponsor. This episode of Comic Geek Speak is brought to you by SuperheroStuff.com. You can go to for all of your superhero superhero stuff. stuff. Yes, and as we record this, it's just before Black Friday. The Christmas season, Christmas season, Christmas season. I is, thought you were going with Christmas season. The, the shopping season is already upon us, and this is a great place to go to someone on your list who has geek in their background. Whether you're looking for T-shirts, hats, hoodies. Watches, socks, tank tops, knick-knack, patty, give your dog a bone. They've <laughs> got it here at superherostuff.com. And they're always running special, so check them out at their website. Some of the new things right now are, of course, items from the Justice League movie, whether it be um, T-shirts. They've got a whole slew of T-shirts here. They've got wallet. They've got a movie logo beanie. Of course, caps for all the main characters in the movie, socks. Here's some yeah, wanna... crazy, simple pajamas they have here. <laughs> you want a pair of socks with capes on them? That's one of their specialties. <laughs> I That's have a Batman exactly pair. exactly right. Um, and, of course, they do have some other things, whether it's, you know, the Thor movie or whether it's just superhero stuff, Batman, Superman, you know, sci-fi, X-Files, Star Trek, Star Wars. And if you happen to be in the tri-state area of, you know, Philadelphia, they have opened up a pop-up store at the King of Prussia Mall. I want to I want to get down there and see. I it. do too, but it's just you know scheduling and so oh, yeah. I'm working the overnights. But uh, it's going to be open, I think, through the holiday season. So if you ever wanted to stop and see their merchandise in person, if you're not at a con or whatever, this is a great place to do that. Gives me one more reason to go to King of Prussia. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> there's not too many of them right now. <laughs> <clears throat> so check them out for all your superhero stuff at superhero.com. All right, so again, spoilers, 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 as usual with these movie reviews. What, what do you, forewarned, for, for? Forewarned is forearmed. forearmed. There you go. That's like what Thank I like you. to say. And we have six arms between us, so that's. Well, hopefully we'll get four more. Uh, four Soon more. we'll be an octopus. Two more, we'll have an octopus, <laughs> yeah. Oh, shimmy gods. All right, well, Mr. Eberly's now joined us. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. <laughs> Comrades in arms, it is a pleasure to be here once again. All right. Outstanding. So, as usual, we're going to just give our initial thoughts. Let's go around the table to the, I think, the biggest league fan <laughs> in the room. Did you, Shane? Let's look That's, at you first. You would argue That's, with that statement. I, uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised. I had a couple issues, which we'll talk about. But overall, I enjoyed it. I thought it was definitely a step in the right direction for what DC movies have been doing. Okay. I was very pleased. Adam? Uh, it... Uh, all, well, I expected going in for this movie to be better than we were all afraid it was going to be after seeing Batman vs. Superman a while ago. And you know what? It met that expectation. This movie was really 
Well, as it, I have some issues too, Shane. I'm sure our issues are going to overlap uh, <clears> to, <throat> I think to so, some so. degree here. But um, yeah, so, but it had some flaws, major and minor, some things that I – with which I subjectively did not agree, some other things that more objectively were just examples of – Slipshot filmmaking, plot was a little messy, the effects were something less than state-of-the-art, um, but it was recognizably some of our favorite DC Comics heroes on screen together and in a fairly entertaining story, and I was I, I left the theater satisfied. Yeah. How about you, Chris? Uh, three for three, I, I more or less echo the sentiments of my uh, beloved comrades in arms there. Um, I remember the New York Times review, the, the title was, Better Than the Last One! <laughs> <laughs> and you know that that's more or less how I came away from this. In that, like Shane said, I went into it. I had, my expectations were not high, and I was pleasantly surprised. I think what the strength of the film for me was that each actor they cast, I think, is well suited to the hero they're playing. And also, it was great to see Superman acting like Superman, which we did not have in uh, Superman versus Batman. So that was a treat. And uh, I thought the Flash and Aquaman that the actors were just outstanding, especially. Uh, in those those two performances, and of course, Wonder Woman steals every scene she's in. I, I think she's just mm -hmm. the casting for that character is yeah. so perfect. Like when she's talking to little kids who gather around her at one scene, and then and just her movie is still, I think, by far the standout DC film. Yes, um, I'd agree. With but that. Uh, yeah, initial thoughts similar to, to you, fine gentlemen. It, it was it, it was fun. I mean, it, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I rarely have much of opinions on these movies, and this is another one. I mean, I, I was going to go see it regardless, because it's a superhero movie, Justice League movie, but I went, when I got out of it, it was kind of like, okay, I saw it, I don't have to see it again, it's two hours of my life, I won't get back. Uh, yeah. I didn't hate it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't hate it, I didn't love it, I was just sort of like, and I hate to use this expression, because I know it's so cliche, but it was like kind of meh, you know, that's... So I'm just going to sort of mostly sit back in this episode and be the navigator, but I really don't have much... Affect me one way or the other. I know people have very strong opinions on these things, and God bless you, great. I couldn't care less, more or less. It's well, just a movie. I went to go see it, and my life is moving on. You know. What, what I really didn't like <laughs> was <laughs> was before the majority of the world saw the movie. Even even before other people saw the movie, they already hated it. Which I can look at something and I go, well, it doesn't look so great, but I'm still going to go see it. I won't sit there and go, oh my God, that's terrible. Before I even see it, because Hopefully they're going to surprise me, and and they didn't in a lot of ways with this. I did think it was getting the more trailers that I saw, the better I thought some things were going to be, and and in that I was true. Uh, the more I saw, the more I thought, oh, it's it's going to be better than I was thinking it would be, and it was. It was better than I thought it would be. Um, I'll I'll if I can start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say a couple Please. things I had problems with. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry with the <clears throat> clearing. God, something's in my throat. <laughs> I first and foremost, I did not like how they brought back Superman. I had a problem with the mother box being responsible for that with a shot from Flash in the cesspool that created Doomsday to do that. Yeah. I wanted him to come through it being regenerated in some way, more along the lines of what happened in the comic for the death of Superman. So that part bothered me. It's it's not terrible, but it wasn't my favorite way to go. I did like the banter about the 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 morality surrounding it between the heroes as they were planning it. That I enjoyed because you really sort of got a sense of Batman was really acting and not to not to compare it to Marvel films, but like Iron Man with Ultron just well, get, we're, we're just going to do it because we need him. We we can do it. We can figure it out. It, it'll work. Well, and that's fine. And he had a contingency plan for if something went wrong, and it worked. And that's that's great. And Wonder Woman really wasn't sure about it, and Cyborg was sure about it, and and Aquaman and Flash weren't too sure. Uh, uh, Flash, I think, was kind of in the middle. But I did like that the the big discussion surrounding it. That was interesting yeah. to me. Interesting yeah. to see the differing <clears throat> the differing opinions coming yeah. to the table. Yeah. There, it's a chance for further characterization. Yeah. Real quick, I just want to add my mm -hmm. my more or less two cents. First of all, I when he said the big guns, I'm thinking, holy cow, we're going to see more leaguers. And then we brought out Lois. I thought, well, I, that's perfect. I, yeah, yes. I thought Lois. I thought that was perfect. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't realize it. But the other thing that bugged me about the thing is, isn't Lois yelling like at the top of her lungs like Clark? I don't know if like cops like yeah. right over there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was secret. That's one of the things they that They were pretty me. loose with their secret identities okay. in this, I thought, All right. Too. But like, again, I'm just going to go back to my hole now. Yeah. Um, 
I also didn't like how the CGI, which I think, Adam, you said this before we recorded, really was not 100% up to par from what we're used to seeing in films, but it was so rampant. It was everywhere. Um, yep, Cyborg did not look right at all to me, but I have a theory about that. Booyah! I love that. <laughs> yeah. They slipped um, that in there for fans of the 2003 yeah, animated yeah. series of Teen Titans. Yeah. So, so to me, he didn't his his body his structure didn't look right. Now, I do have a problem. I don't know why they couldn't just let one arm because he has one arm and one leg in the comic, right? Originally, yeah. That's originally yeah. the cyborg stuff. I don't know why they couldn't still do that. I don't know if they thought it would look too weird to people, but I I don't, I don't know for whatever reason. To me, it's really just his head, and everything else is mechanical, which just looks odd to me. But the way they built his body didn't look quite right to me. However, at the end, when he was getting some more control over things and he reformed his body, mm -hmm. maybe that will look like what I think it should have looked like because it looked like it smoothed out all the edges, put the symbol on his chest, and, and did different things that I think I was expecting earlier on. So I'll, I'll forget. Not that I have to forgive anything because I'd still see it anyway, but <laughs> I'll forgive that for now and see what they do with it next time they bring Cyborg into something. But that gives me a little hope that, okay, they did this for a reason and he's going to have more control over the abilities and look different, better, more Cyborg like what I would think. Um, I really thought that I would not like Flash and Aquaman. Partially because I love the Flash TV so show so much. I was a little bit jaded like, okay, what are they doing mm -hmm. this for? I really thought they were hilarious and fantastic. Um, I wasn't too keen on Atlantis because, again, I think it was way too CGI heavy. I expected them to be able to talk underwater, not just kind of motion and create bubbles of air well, yeah, to be able to do that. Yeah, vocal cords would have adapted to that yeah. by now. So I kind of thought that was a, a missed opportunity, but I loved seeing Mera. I loved seeing oh, yeah. Atlantis, period. Um, I think all of the landscapes that were cg were just too cg they, mm. they did not look real acres and, that's, and acres of unconvincing yeah. piles of pixels and, and that's a problem i have where <laughs> where the difference between and and i'm sorry but i'm comparing it marvel movies and the dc movies <clears throat> is the marvel movies do look a little bit more grounded in reality as far as where they are filming even if it's on a green screen it still looks real i don't get that same feeling from the dc movies no matter which one it is shane can i argue a point yeah. um Actually, not an argument, an argue, but to maybe to give them a little bit of leeway, maybe what they're shooting for, because I think you've, you've drawn an excellent contrast. Marvel's appeal was always that its universe is grounded in, quote, the real world, True. real cities, and so forth. DC's its universe is always in this almost fantastical world with you know Gotham City and Central City and all these cities that are that are imaginary essentially. And I see what you're saying about the effects, and I agree completely. Pile of pixels, indeed, my brother Murdo, <laughs> but. The, I think that also gave sort of this, this almost fantastical comic book sheen to, to the way everything looked in that film. Because you're right, it did not. It looked a little. I don't even mean this in a negative. A little off. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't really in our world the way I think Marvel is supposed to be rooted in our world. And that, and that didn't. I noted it didn't. It didn't bother me as much because maybe I'm being very generous here. Maybe I thought maybe I'm just giving them more credit than they deserve. I don't know. But uh, I, I if. I'd like to think that's what they were going for there. Because the, the, dif the difference in, in, in uh, look and tone for the Marvel movies, is, I think, is stark. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, no pun intended. intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, the, and the parts that really bothered me were more Atlantis, more fantastical arenas that they were set in. Um, and I also thought Steppenwolf was way too CGI. Oh, I he agree 100%. He just did not animated. look right at all. Yeah, and the character design wasn't very good. No, with. no. I, generic I, barbarian warlord from outer space yeah give him a, give him his beard for pete's sake yeah at least do that yeah yeah <laughs> okay now before i go into the really good the only other thing that i really had a problem with and it's not that I, I didn't like it i just don't understand it that clip in the beginning where kids are filming superman for their podcast for their for their podcast right <laughs> and that's fine but i kind of thought we'd revisit that i thought he'd get an give an answer like a concrete yeah but what do you like that. for earth Right. Because it cut and, him off. It's like, Ooh. And, and, and they cut it off it. and they went to the credits and they never came back to it and he never said anything. I thought even if they didn't reference it in direct relation to that recording that he would have just said, you know what, this is what I love about Earth. Just just some one line that would have cemented that for me. So I'm not sure why Good that point. was there at all. Yeah, I'd completely forgotten about that scene until you mentioned it. It just, it just seems weird to me. My guess is the writers forgot about it too. Well, that could be. <laughs> um, and, and it's fine if they put it in there and if that was part of the re retakes and part of where they um, CGI'd his mustache out. Yeah, stuff, just, because that's, that's what it looked like. Real briefly on that, 
generally, again, I've got blinders on to all the inside casting, reshoots, all these kind of things for any kind of movie, like what's going on. So I heard a little bit about this a month or so ago with, I guess, I and mean, even I would talk to Matt the other day. I saw mm-hmm. Matt uh, and we were chatting about this. He says that Matt Cavill, Matt Cavill. Henry. Henry, H- Henry Cavill, who, by, by the way, for some reason for me, I couldn't, I still can't get him at Superman. It doesn't work for me. I don't want to get into that. But, but anyway, he's filming Mission Impossible 6 yeah. and has an actual mustache for that film. Right. And they needed that for the film. And to do reshoots, he had to have... They had to have CGI that out for Superman. So right, they pulled absolutely. a CGI Cesar Romero on. Uh, and, apparently. And that's <laughs> fine. And, and you know, in that little clip in the very beginning, it didn't look quite right, but it was fine. You know, but I just, I just didn't understand what that scene was there. So if somebody has information or an idea or, or something that says, well, this is what I think, why they put that there, I'd love to know because I'm curious. Again, I didn't hate it. It was fun to see him interact with kids and act a little bit more like what I expect Superman to act like. Um, it just seemed out of place when there was nothing ever referenced through the entire rest of the movie about it. Um, I also missed Perry White not being there. I expected yep, him to show yep. up somewhere. Even They even got a, a, a picture of Kevin Costner in there, which I liked how they did that at least. Um, but that, that's really all that I didn't like about it. And, and I mean some of that's really minor and some of that's just me being picky. Well, that's us being <clears throat> geeks and oh, yeah, all yeah. these things. Here's what I liked about it. I loved Wonder Woman. Absolutely oh. fantastic, as she was in Batman Superman, as she was in her own movie. Um, loved uh, Ben Affleck as Batman. I loved Jeremy Irons as Alfred. They could do no wrong on screen for me. I, I, some people I've read say that he just wasn't right for the part. He wasn't reading it right. He didn't put his heart into it. I thought he did. I thought it was great. I hope that there is a Batman movie with him in it. Um, it doesn't appear to be. There's a whole big thing online today about uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and other people, people and yeah. <sighs> that will disappoint me because I really do think he was good in it. I really enjoyed his portrayal in this movie more so, and I liked it in Batman versus Superman, but I liked it more in this. Um, loved, absolutely loved that Superman's costume was brighter. Loved that you got to see Superman laugh a little bit, Cyborg yep, laugh, yep, that they yep. had a good time, that they were goofing around with each other a little bit at times. Um, the part in the credits where Aquaman gets thrown in the air and Cyborg catches him and says, your ride's not over, and he goes, my man, and keeps going. Yeah. I loved seeing that in all its glorious context. Because um, that was in a couple of the commercials. That was in a couple of the commercials. Loved um, um, uh, J.K. Simmons as Jim Gordon. Mm-hmm. Loved the 1989 Batman music coming through <laughs> in that. Loved how they portrayed, really did, Flash. I didn't think I would. Um, I guess I came to realize just really how old Batman was in relation to everybody else being so young. Well, you can see when he had the beard, all the what, gray. Yeah, all the, the gray. How he kept talking about 20 years in Gotham yep. just worked fine and all that. And that's, that's, that's fine. I, I know he's playing an older Batman now, and we're used to him joining when he's younger and Flash is closer to his age. But I also like how Bruce kind of helped him get into school to, or uh, the job for the police, uh, police force to start doing forensics and all that. Um, I really did like how Aquaman came across. I really didn't think I would because he looked so different to what I expect Aquaman to look like, even the hook-handed, long-haired Aquaman. But he really pulled it off. It was really a great portrayal for me. Um, I just really loved how they all came together. The story was a little choppy um, in parts, but I think it served its purpose well enough. There are some things I would have changed. I would have shown... I, I don't think I would have done three mother boxes come together to do something unless you guys know it. I've never heard or seen that anywhere. So me being a comic fan, that seemed odd to me. These mother boxes are not much like the mother boxes of the comics. No. No, yeah, they're, not, they're not at all. some kind of, you know, engine of destruction. No, but... it's it's just a computer. Yeah. It's a handheld computer. It's yeah, an iPhone. Basically a yeah, exactly. It was a smartphone <clears throat> before there was a it's a smartphone with an onboard AI yeah. that is also able to teleport and do all kinds of other wonderful and occasionally terrible stuff. But so, um, yeah, there's there's a lot more to them than just what we saw on screen. I love the boom tubes. I really expected Dark Side to come through even if it was just for a minute yeah, somewhere. He did, he did get a quick mention. He did get a mention. Just, that's it though, just a quick mention, just once, yeah. And before I relinquish, I also <laughs> loved how Cyborg and his father kind of resolved things at the end because I'm a sap and I Perfect. like that. Yep, fathers and sons. So 
uh, overall, I really was pleased, and and I do want to go see it again. I couldn't get the kids to go with me, so I want to get one or both of them to go see it. Couldn't get them? Um, Is it just because of their schedules? Their or? schedules, yeah. And I hope they're not refusing no, to see superhero no. movies. They, no, they didn't want me to not see it right away, and their schedules didn't allow it. So I just went and saw it, and then hopefully in the next week or two, I can get one or both of them to go see it. So I, I was really pleased with it. I, I thought it was fun. Even if it wasn't the best movie in the world, I know the Marvel movies seem to be more better produced still in my mind, but this was a step in the right direction and I had a good time with it, so I'm happy. Next. <laughs> the, reins of, the reins of Vince Do you yield? I do, I do. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to reel off a bunch of stuff that I uh, liked and did not like also. I'm going to begin by answering uh, your very first point, Shane, about uh, the uh, resurrection scene mm-hmm. for Superman. Uh, I... Hated that in Batman v Superman when Lex Luthor put together his uh, little – his pit of radioactive ecto-cooler. I really and, hated it there. And dunked Zod's oh. corpse in there and mutated it into Doomsday. That that was a low point in a film that contained a lot of low points. And yeah, but, but for some reason, the way they modified it and recontextualized it for this movie, it, it worked for me. Just putting you know, Kal-El's dead body clad in its classic – Clark Kent blue suit in which he was I buried. did notice that. That was nice. And then the thing with the cyborg at the controls and the flash uh, adding the spark of divine lightning to bring him. It, 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 it's very Frankensteinian, mm-hmm. but it, it reminded me of the kind of over-the-top crazy that would have appeared on the cover of a 60s Justice League story. <laughs> well, that's true. It's exactly that's the kind true. of tableau of the bizarre that they would have used to, to lure kids to parting with their dimes to, to read this adventure of the Justice League, how Superman came back to life. Uh, so it, for whatever reason, that that part worked. Um, so let's uh, let's see what other things that I'd wanted to mention. Uh, Steppenwolf was a little bit disappointing as a sub boss, as it were. I was I was also expecting Darkseid. I think we all were. Yeah. Um, but uh, we just just got a fleeting mes- uh, mention, and meanwhile we've got Steppenwolf in his poorly animated and designed incarnation, just going through the motions of gathering up these MacGuffins. Yeah. And uh, really, once once you unscramble the somewhat structurally messy plot a little bit, you realize it's just a classical MacGuffin hunt. You know, just mm-hmm. a race against time to gather up all the bits and pieces of the doomsday weapon before the bad guy can. Yeah. And when he inevitably beats you to the punch, go in and uh, beat and punch him. <laughs> it was the mass device. Very, it was the weather well dominator. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I did somehow. Uh, I, I reacted well to the, 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 the final scene with Steppenwolf, though, when uh, all the, the League gang up on him and he finally experiences a little bit of fear. And then his uh, parademon drones turn on him and he boom tooms out of there, surrounded by a massive swarm of them, just like clawing at him. And yeah, yeah that, 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 that image struck a chord with me somehow. That, that was a good way for the bad guy to go out, I thought. Oh, it, that was. That was. I won't disagree with that. It was a good way to end the battle. Yeah. That even if it wasn't a classic Steppenwolf, and even if it didn't give us much of an example, m- much of a hint of uh, apocalyptic things to come, and I do mean apocalyptic as opposed to apocalyptic, you know, spelled mm-hmm. with a K. Sure. Um, so hopefully this is a this presages a full scale invasion with Darkseid that will probably come in the third movie because if that uh, second post credit scene uh, tells us anything, the second movie will probably be more Earthbound. Which. And- I love that too. Because not for, if not, there are if any there subsequent are. movies. Well, yeah, this one's not performing all that well at the box office yeah. for the first well, time. It's, it's not performing well for a film of its type. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's made nine, I think, ninety six million domestically, and more overseas. But b- because of the, the heroes involved, they're expecting obviously a staggering blockbuster numbers. Yeah. Mm. I do think that was the first time we saw Lex Luthor act like Lex Luthor. Well, even then, he still acted more like the Jesse Eisenberg oh, he did. Joker, <laughs> Lex Luthor, which but, means he acted more like the Joker. But compared to what we had, I'll, I'll take that little tiny bit and clip at the end there. Yep. And there's a chance for even further improvement because yeah. hopefully there will be another movie at some point. Yeah. And I you know, spoilers so. here, Deathstroke, the most Ugh. Wade Wilson-ish Deathstroke we've seen anywhere so far. As My far only as problem, there. he didn't look old enough. Really? His, his you, said, face. you said Wade Wilson. Oh, Slade, Slade Wilson. Okay. Damn it. It's all right. Well, wait. Yeah. <laughs> he's just such an obvious dead-on ripoff yeah. of, of the Slade Will- Deadpool is. that uh, <laughs> it, it, Damn you, Liefeld. <laughs> messing with my head. Yeah, I got, I got a very Villains United feel at the, that, that end oh, credit. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, yeah, I, didn't, I just didn't think he looked old enough. If you would have sparkled some, um, some black or brown through his beard like he wasn't quite all gray yet – I would have thought he looked a little bit better looking so young in his skin tone, his face. I just don't, didn't think he looked 
worn enough. <laughs> well, but, maybe the... but it wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't bad. It was, it was okay. I just expect him to be older. Let's just – let's say that the ACTH treatments that gave him his powers also <laughs> gave him age-defying <gasps> yeah, coverage. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> Maybe he has like a healing factor. He ages at a slower rate. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was cool to see that. There's uh, yeah. very good uh, post credit scenes. And they put the the, oh. the fun one oh, first. Oh, yeah. That was oh, fantastic. Yeah. The, the race? Oh, my God. That was great. Right. And the one with serious uh, implications for the plots of future films yeah. th- at the end. So they made something worth staying all the way through the credits to see. Sure did. So they did. They pulled that off correctly. Um uh, what else? What else? Uh, how about we go through the different characters one by one, just kind of a lightning round. I agree with you totally about all the supporting cast members, by the way. J.K. Simmons and Amy Adams and Jeremy Irons. He mm-hmm. makes a great Alfred. He really oh helped my God, to, fantastic to ground Alfred. all of this. Um, we'll begin with the Man of Steel. Steel. Uh, I still think they haven't quite gotten him right. I mean, he's. I agree that I was uh, overjoyed to see him expressing some joy in mm-hmm. this movie. He smiled a bit, uh, cracked a one-liner or two, although... And one of the things I'll say about this movie as a whole, though, is that I'm glad that uh, thanks to Joss Whedon's involvement, we got some injections of humor mm-hmm. and uh, bonhomie, and it's, it's not just all dour, brooding, angst-ridden, overblown Zack mm-hmm. Snyder-ish nonsense. Um, so I'm, I, I am sorry for the family tragedy that befell Zack oh Snyder, God, but yes. I've got to say his reduced involvement in this movie went a long way to its being as enjoyable as it was, in my opinion. Now, what so, I read, though, was that he had in place what was going to happen, and Joss Whedon just finished it. So he may have had a hand in making some of that light her oh, to begin with. I'm positive that he which, did. Which is fine. I mean, I I thought he did fine. For May I say something on that, along that front? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks, brother. The My issue with Zack Snyder directing is – and again, to contrast with the Marvel films, I want to see others direct, other directors' visions apply to the DC universe. Like the, One of the reasons why the Wonder Woman movie was so good is because of the director they had involved mm-hmm. in that film. Yeah, yeah. Patty and, Jenkins. And, 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 the write, and the writing that went into that movie. Um, Snyder has a certain approach and vision to these types of stories, and I think in certain scenes – like there's scenes in Watchmen that I think are amazing, like the mm-hmm. opening musical montage, for example, yeah. um, where I think you know certain scenes call for a certain gravity, which which he can often apply. But it can be very easy to be very ham-handed with that and to go overboard with it. And I agree with Murd in that it was nice to see some wisecracking, you know, and because because humor is so important, not just to get entertainment to the audience, but also to develop character. Because characterization mm. really comes out when they apply humor as well. And I think one of the Reasons why I can't get this movie like you know an exuberant rating is that the writing in these films needs to improve, and I, I think that they need to make room for more characterization, more interaction between these characters. Like like what the actors who played the Flash and Aquaman did with what they had, I thought was fantastic. Um, and like in the Wonder Woman film, they gave her character a lot of room to breathe, a lot of like little scenes, like in London, different place. We got a sense of who she was, and of course when she scales the trench, that defined the entire character. That was brilliant filmmaking. Okay. Um, we need more of that uh, in these films. Like the Marvel films, there's a lot of different directorial visions in that universe. Some are, are depending on your taste, are more effective than others. I think DC needs a lot more of that. Just my two cents on that. All of that said, though, and I'm glad you agree with me about uh, the <laughs> inclusion of some lightheartedness here, uh, Chris, some levity. Uh, but it didn't – some of it you – know, also to your point about how the writing needs to improve, some of it didn't work as well as – uh, as, as some other parts of it. I mean, so some of the humor did feel somewhat forced. Oh, sure. Some of the scenes really needed to be developed a little more, you know, whether on the actors' end or the writers' end. And some some of the scenes are just kind of cringeworthy, difficult to watch. One of those, you know, tying, you know, getting back to Superman, what I was saying about him and how they haven't quite gotten the character right, although they're on the right track. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like whatever chemistry, on screen chemistry between Cavill and. Uh, Amy Adams in, in the, the last couple of movies that they've shared together. I don't think all of it quite returned from the dead with Superman because the scene between him and Lois back at uh, the Kent farm was one of those that I thought uh, needed some work. It's like uh, there's, he's come back from the dead and he's talking about how it felt itchy and how – Yeah, I a, thought that was a little odd too. Lois says that he smells nice and it's, it's really kind of awkward. <laughs> and well, that, it's that, like they, they thought that they needed to put something in there to address the fact that, oh, yeah, this character has just come back from the dead. He's reunited with his loved one. and They, they felt they needed to do some human thing with him before throwing him back into the action, yeah, yeah. but they didn't really want to – 
do it, even though they felt obligated. So they Superman, just, Superman should have another movie. That's part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. He, Sorry. He, he deserves at least one good, good movie that's wholly about him, without a psychotic Batman trying to kill him, and uh, studio executives throwing all kinds of other stuff at him, yeah. where he can just uh, grow uh, into the next phase of his cinematic career, past Man of Steel. Or he becomes something closer to the well seasoned and optimistic Superman that uh, longtime fans really want to see. Yeah. And again, there's kind of a baby step or two toward in that direction in mm-hmm. this movie. Sure. But, you know, still felt a little off. And plus, they had to put in the obligatory sequence where the first thing he does when he comes back from the dead is uh, fight all the other leaguers and try to kill them. <sighs> Some people just think that's the only time Superman is interesting when he's, he's being used as a. F- a foil for other characters, and I, I I can't go along with that. So anyway, Superman, no, he, he was dead for most of the movie, Let's, uh, so he didn't get that much chance to shine. So that, that that's one of the things that I kind of put against this movie, actually. Batman. Now he, here's where I think Matt would probably uh, be seething. Oh, I'm I'm sure he would be. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's against the idea of Batfleck to begin with. Yeah, he um, is. And so here we have a, a Batman that's a lot more human than we've seen in most other movies. I mean, it, it's almost as if the nightmarish events of Batman v Superman shocked him to sanity to some extent, where instead of this fanatical, xenophobic zealot who's just hell-bent on playing judge, jury, and executioner against Superman, suddenly he realizes, oh, this guy's got the same mom as... His mom has the same name as my mom, and uh, also he sacrificed himself, however strangely and unnecessarily, to save humanity. And uh, so that seems to have made him realize a few things about himself and his own behavior, and now he's acting rather differently. He he seems to me almost more like a Dick Grayson Batman in this movie than like a Bruce Wayne Batman. I'd agree with that. And Matt would probably return at this point and saying, ah, he's neither. He's a Ben Affleck Batman. <laughs> so, yeah, he's uh, that, that was a little weird. There were a couple of things, like, for example, the scene after Superman comes back to life and pummels Batman in his bat armor halfway to death, and Batman's just kind of rolling around on the ground doing his version of the family guy <laughs> ah, <Yeah. laughs> joke. <laughs> that was a little weird. Yeah, so there, was a couple of, there were a couple of moments when he seemed a little bit too humanized, a little too loose. Yeah. For, for Bruce Wayne, but and his interplay with Wonder Woman was quite enjoyable, too. Speaking of which, I agree with you, Shane, that Wonder Woman continues to kick yeah. as much ass as oh she needs God. to, and then some. She's really the, she's the spiritual heart and soul of this, of this film. She's holding everything together. She's the most mature of a lot of them, because mm-hmm. she's working with children, as she, as she says. And uh, so you understand why the film version of Batman chose her to be the leader. Aquaman? Very little to say about Aquaman, because I think this interpret this sort of dude bro surfer monarch who spends more of his time up uh, hanging out with uh, Icelandic fishermen than he does uh, down ruling his realm. It, it's, this take on the character actually worked for me. I thought Jason Momoa played it well. The only things I would have done differently, actually, it would be to just go full blonde with him. I'm glad they added a few blonde yeah. highlights to his hair, yeah. but I wish they could have embraced that and also embraced the aquatic telepathy. That's the other thing. Instead of <laughs> him trying to downplay being able to talk to fish is like manipulating ocean currents uh, and getting the fish to do what he wants to do that way. Just just take a few pages from Peter David's book and just let let him actually communicate with the fish and just maybe do, put something in the script that demonstrated what a cool and advantageous power that can be and yeah. not something to make fun of. Right. And uh, on a side note there, I'm also glad that they threw Mera into the movie, but I wish they'd done a little bit more I with her too. than just have her be one more person for Aquaman to argue with. Yeah. And uh, is, it, is it my understanding that they've actually also completed filming for an Aquaman movie? Oh, I didn't know they completed it yet. Really? I hadn't heard that either. I'm I knew they almost, were, but... I'm almost positive, according to the interwebs, that that uh, is uh, in post-production. Wow. Because um, I know that they've filmed some things with um, Mara, you know, uh, Amber Heard as, mm-hmm. um, as Mara, and I'm almost positive I'm going to quickly check uh, what the IMDB says. It says it's in post-production. That's good. According to this. Oh, wow. Yeah, so so that take on the Sea King worked just fine for me. And uh, even they threw in a couple of action scenes of him swimming around underwater that mm-hmm. really looked pretty cool. Yeah. And, and that scene near the end where he's sky surfing all the way down to the ground after his ride with Cyborg came to an end. And- My only problem with that is it was too much like Batman and Robin or Batman forever. Batman and Robin. Probably, When yeah. Robin and... Batman are doing that from the exploding rocket that Mr. Freeze is up in, and they're <laughs> sky surfing down on pieces of the ro- ah. yeah. That's the only thing that I saw of that that went, oh, really? He's sky yes. surfing down on a parademon. I, I see your point. But that, 
that's just me because I know those Batman movies mm-hmm. like the back of my hand. Anything associated with that particular yeah, went, entry oh, in the series. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Turn one stomach. Yeah. Uh, Cyborg. Now, I think most of us would agree, you know, knowing what we know about DC history, that Cyborg doesn't really deserve to be portrayed as a founding member of the League. I agree with that. But uh, not um, pre-Flashpoint. Well, Correct. even in the comics, post-Flashpoint, he doesn't deserve to be portrayed as a founding member of the League. Oh, okay. But, I mean, obviously he, he is more he, or yes, less. Yes, yeah. yes. So there, yeah. there's that much precedence at, le- right, at right. least. Thanks to Jeff Johns throwing him in there. And Correct. Like, and that's not because I don't like Cyborg. Oh, I love no. the character. That's, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. It's just we know that there are a couple of other characters that should be queued up yes. to be included in the cinematic interpretation. And there was a before. cameo of a Green Lantern. I yes, but I expected to see him too to somewhere come out of nowhere from what we saw and you wouldn't have seen it in the one trailer <laughs> where he's like oh you showed up and i'm like that's what i thought was going to be green lantern oh well i'm sure ryan reynolds has the time and yeah. you know of course you martian manor could have been there somewhere as somebody else you never know i'm hoping <laughs> they bring that in i'm hoping he is there somewhere <laughs> any well, one of those characters exactly been... because heck even Remember... on supergirl martian manhunter works mm-hmm I remember Bruce uh, say that well, we, we're going to have a table with uh, room for more members. Yeah, yeah. at the end, so. loved that. Which bit that too. was fun too. Yeah, yeah. that was a great yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. So that's the Hall of Justice. Mm-hmm. They're on Braxton Island, midway between Gotham and Metropolis. And yeah, that's another thing is that that landmark has uh, oh, see, I, no antecedent in the comics. I don't. I think. took that to be that it was Old Wayne Manor that he was walking into. He was walking. That's into how a, I took it as well. He was yeah. walking in a building. On yeah, the, that's the what island. I thought as oh, well. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought he was by his where his uh, like apartment house thing is the glass house he lives in oh. i thought that they were in the backdrop of wayne manor that was all decimated that he was walking into to say this is where we're going to have a meeting house okay I'm, I, th- I thought it was uh, what that structure that they wrecked on braxton island okay. when they were searching for seppin wolf and his parademons okay um so anyway but anyway cyborg you know getting past the idea that he maybe doesn't deserve to be in this movie just yet uh they did a good job with him i thought uh, yeah. the, uh, ray fisher the actor who played him i thought brought just the right level of quiet intensity to him some mm-hmm. of his lines were a little delivered with a bit of stiffness but when you consider that he's playing a character who is slowly feeling his humanity being overwhelmed by alien machinery it's understanding that his delivery might be a little bit mechanical he might be trying to bring that across sure but yeah I, he wasn't he didn't his interpretation of the character lacks the belligerence of, uh, of, of that Victor Stone had in the early days in the New Teen Titans, as written by Wolfman, and also the boisterousness of the animated cyborg. He, he found a, a new way to go with the character, and he, he made me care yeah. about cyborg as a leaguer. And there was a lot cut out. Uh, well, that's what I thought, too. There was too. a lot of clips of him at Gotham University of football that I, I've watched the trailers post the movie, yeah, yeah. and I've seen that. Was cut I was out of the film. Oh, like really him looking, on the football field, for yeah, example. Yeah, I was yeah. looking forward to some of that. Well, there's from what I hear, if I'm wrong, please. There was almost an hour cut out of what was supposedly the original running time of three hours. Yeah, wow. two wow. hours. Well, and again, I hope we get that in the release. The DVD oh, I'm sure we will. Because I think that'll be just just like what happened with Man of Steel, just like what happened with Batman versus Superman, especially the extended version. I know I will like more. Because there's important things that are left out for some reason. I don't know why Warner Brothers feels Brothers the need feel- to do that. Again, I apologize to listeners. I'm actually recording this in between parent-teacher conferences at my high school. So uh, I want to get my opinion in uh, as soon as I can. I appreciate it. Kind of following with Murd's pattern here, when I come to the, the characters – and Shane, I was also struck by the oddity of that opening clip with Superman uh, when he was speaking to the children because – well, I, I think what they were trying to do there was they were trying to reassert that sort of image of Superman that is so deeply uh, embedded in our, in our popular culture, like the very friendly, mm-hmm. uh, you know, crusader for truth and justice, who's also, uh, you know, you always feel reassured around him and safe. And I don't know if they did this on purpose. I thought Cavill played that scene in a very stiff way, mm. which I, I didn't. So when you think of Superman, like you think of Christopher Reeve, like I'll get him, getting the cat from the tree, and like I now again, maybe they're they're trying to build him up to what we know as the sort of the ideal version of Superman. So I'm 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 not sure where they were going with that, but I, and I also was confused why they didn't return to it. I could almost feel a little bit of resentment on Cavill's part for their taking the character back in that direction. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, perhaps I don't know. It's it's, it's a fair it's a fair observation, Murd. Um, but otherwise, I really enjoyed seeing. Because I, I like Cavill as Superman. I really enjoyed seeing him, letting him play Superman as I think Superman should be. Um, the, the scene with the Flash at the end was wonderful, the, the race. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was counting on that being one of the, 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 the uh, extra scenes. And the 
his interaction with Cyborg at the end were well done. So I, I, I want to see more. I want to see more of Cavill to Superman. I, I, one of the reasons why I didn't like Superman versus Batman was I said I wanted a, a Superman movie. I wanted something to further develop his take on that character. Um, I love Affleck as Batman. I love the the weather beaten. Uh, Middle-aged Batman, who's, who's really feeling the, the, the scar tissue of his campaign, you know, low these past uh, twenty years. I don't, I don't feel like I'm watching Ben Affleck play Batman. I mean, I don't think he's Christian Bale, but hmm. uh, I do enjoy, enjoy the interpretation. I think his chemistry with, with uh, Gal Gadot is fantastic. You feel that he has that sort of underlying feeling for her, and, and she may reciprocate that because she may see some of Steve Trevor in him. Um, they make the comment about how he would have, you know, he would have been the pilot on, on uh, Bruce's aircraft, for example. Uh, so I'm, I really enjoyed that chemistry. And, and Jeremy Irons can, again, he's one of those artists who can read a grocery list. It's riveting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Love Flash and Aquaman. I, I really enjoy those performances. I thought Ezra Miller was just fun, and, and that's all Whedon as far as I'm concerned. Like all that dialogue to scream Joss Whedon to me, that could be wrong, but it just felt like his touch, the, the interactions between them. I like showing the, the tension between Arthur Curry, his, his one foot in the world of the surface, and then in Atlantis. And I thought they played up that tension nicely with the time they had. Thrilled to see Mera. Can't wait to see more of her. Uh, I thought that was well handled. I really, Murd, I want to ask you. When they showed the flashback scene, almost Lord of the Rings, like when they showed the various civilizations fighting off uh, the force of apocalypse. Oh, that was a great sequence. Is that Hercules? It could have been. I mean, I'm sure Zeus was definitely in there. And I know that uh, 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 Thulis, uh, the fellow who played uh, uh, Ares in the Wonder Woman movie, was also Ares in that scene. He had a little cameo. I like that. Okay. Oh, I missed that. We're willing to bet somebody was supposed to be Hercules in that sequence also. And that, of course, is where we got the Green Lantern cameo. Yeah. Yep. And that that was really fun. And um, uh, Cyborg, I thought, and I agree with you guys. I thought the way they they made him appear was a little off. Maybe they felt an audience would be weirded out by part flesh, part machine. But I don't know, six million dollar man. I don't know. I, I would have been fine with it. But um, I thought the actor really had the tone of that character well. I, I, you know, someone who's is now feeling the burden of this this terrible physical tragedy. Um, and so that they're going to be a more dour and, and downbeat character. But again, I like. Him kind of coming out a little bit with the Flash in terms of being a little more uh, friendly, and and when they give those characters chances to interact, because I think the actors are well cast in those roles, and they give them some good dialogue to work with, the the those icon, iconic Justice Leaguers come to life for me. The scene where Wonder Woman tricks Aquaman with her lasso. Oh my god, that was brilliant. Which I mean, I, I'd like to think Josh Whedon wrote that as well, no, but without, yeah, yeah, I mean, but that. That's what the DC films need. I mean, DC, of course, has the epic, you know, Earth is the stake feel to them, and that's often the DC universe. I, I love when, you know, Steppenwolf, who I thought otherwise was terribly designed, said, you know, I'll be one of the new gods. Like, that was a thrill for me yep, to hear. Yep. Um, so, uh, again, the movie, ha- I think these movies have potential. I think they've, they've got a good foundation with the actors there. Just, uh, again, sharper writing, which I thought we saw more of in this film, and let's get some other. And not even this time a, a crack against Zack Snyder, just just other directors' visions uh, in this universe. But um, I, I, I I I I enjoyed it. Uh, Superman versus Batman, I thought was a dirge uh, for the most part. Mm. Um, this was I, I thought significantly improved, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to a Legion of Doomed or Villains United type yeah, yeah. team. Uh, that'd be great. And uh, but again, I was surprised they didn't show at least an inkling of Dark Side. Yep. Um, like with Marvel, the average viewer doesn't know the fi- know the comic world, but you're at least getting a sense of how dangerous Thanos is because they keep showing him in little bits and pieces. Like the average moviegoer here doesn't even know who the hell Dark Side is. It's just some a name he spouted. Um, he said Dark Side is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well done. Well, in a future episode, I'm going I'm to be raving about the glory that is the Mister Miracle comic right now. But um, so you know. Little tighter scripts. Let's bring in the sprawl a little bit, and, and let the character shine. And I, I think we could have you know an even better film uh, coming down the pike. Hopefully, they'll, as Pan said, they'll make him one. Quick question before I go, because I'm out of it. Are they going to have someone else play Batman in the future? Is that being? That's what down? it was all <laughs> over all over the Twitter today. Apparently, that's that was one of the big things I, on Twitter. I really hope not. I want him to get a chance to do more. I really. I didn't mind anything he did in Batman versus Superman, and I really liked what he did in Justice League. I, I agree. 
Yeah, suggestions are pouring in for a potential new Batman. Fans are weighing in with their ten candidates to possibly replace Ben Affleck as Batman in the DC Comics Extended Universe. Uh, I I, I agree with Shane. I I think he's – I, I like him in the role. And yeah. For this type, of, for this type of Batman, I, I like him in the role. Mm. And so. and I know Matt would disagree, but I, I like that he did something that is very Batman-like all the way through Batman versus Superman, and almost got screwed because of it. <laughs> Not that I agree with the whole Martha's what snapped him out of the craziness, but I, I like that he's become the one to try and pull the group together because he knows it's right. He can't do it by himself. He needs the help to fight something this grand. Um, and that shows age and wisdom. Yeah, and th- and that's what I would expect from this Batman, a 20 plus year veteran of crime fighting Batman, that l- worn and beaten and feeling every ounce of pain. That's what I would expect from this one. And and I got it. So I I really don't understand the people that don't like him as Batman and and don't like the way he's portrayed and 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 even Matt I, I would not understand why you wouldn't want him to progress because he still would have a plan and he has a plan the plan is to get the Justice League together and that's his mission now to make sure that he lives up to what he screwed up when he fought Superman without listening to what Clark was saying and not taking a step back as he should have the arrogance of youth is behind him and yeah. he understands he can't protect the world alone yeah all right, gentlemen. Well, I apologize. I have to depart as duty truly calls here. <laughs> um, fracking but, swears. Uh, fracking swears. Uh, a solid three. Okay. A solid three out of five. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to all of you, brothers. Happy Thanksgiving. You as well. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Chris. Thank you, my friends. I look forward to talking to you in the very near future. Okay. Absolutely. Good night, gentlemen. Good Take night. care. Good night. Hi, Chris. Bye. One of the other things I did like, I really did enjoy that first opening, second opening scene with Batman fighting the power demon. Yes. Yeah. I really like that. The only yeah. thing I didn't like about the Parademon, I didn't like how Steppenwolf would turn them into zombies. Yeah. Uh, that bothered me too. I've always had a problem with people being turned into stuff. Yeah. This is too I mean, this is this is apocalyptic apocalyptian villains. These are yeah. creatures of that world. Right. They're homegrown they, there under yeah. Granny Goodness's tutelage. Or, yeah. I expected some Granny Goodness or Desaad little comment to come out. I, at raised some point. in the churning pits of Armageddon or whichever apocalyptic landmark you want to name it. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that they're recruiting outside help no, like that. No. It's a little too Tales of the Crypt presents Demon Knight for yeah. my taste. For the most part, they looked okay. Again, I didn't care for the zombie-esque look of them. But I know the one in Batman vs. Superman didn't look quite like that. It had more of the, the garb on that I would mm. expect a parademon to have. Um but yeah, I, I was a little disappointed, and that they smell fear, and that's what they feast on. Then, uh, but it was a spectacular visual anyway to see parademons flying around. Yeah, yeah, it's that that opening scene. I agree that that's for for, for hardcore Batman fans, that's probably the most traditionally Batman yeah. thing you're seeing see. him perched on oh the gargoyle God. of over the city. And uh, as we talk about some of the CGI stuff that we didn't like, I love absolutely love how they have his cape fan out whenever he jumps that it looks like an old classic cape that i would have seen back in the golden age even the way um batman would stand arms akimbo or something and the cape would come out and just you could see the scallops in it right. very stark and i just love how they do it because in those days it kind of looked like it had uh, steel rods yeah so we yeah could use it to glide and 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 i really appreciate that when he jumps off something the, you, you can hear the cape the noise that they do the <laughs> Of of the wind going and popping it out, so he, it helps slow down his descent or whatever. Um, yeah, God, I, I like the 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 whole look of his costume. I even like the look of the Batmobile, um, and that's the first time I didn't really like the tumbler from Batman Begins and the and the Christopher Nolan stuff. Um, it's okay, but I prefer the eighty nine Batman, the sixty six Batmobile, uh, the eighty nine Batmobile, and now this one. Um, I know Matt would disagree with this, and I'm not too keen on huge machine guns popping out everywhere, but the 89 Batmobile had that too, and I am okay with it to a certain extent. Mm, that's right. It just, I just remembered uh, we see Batman using a couple of uh, apocalyptic ray guns yep. to zap the parademons. And, and I'm okay with that too, although I know Matt would have a huge problem with yeah. that. Yeah, the, the hardcore bat maniacs out there would yeah. disapprove of him using any, any kind gun. of gun in any situation. Yeah. And, and I can understand that, so I, I yeah. certainly don't begrudge them that opinion. 
Um, I just think in, in this universe, I think it works okay. I was more bothered by him using a regular gun in Batman versus Superman in certain scenes. Not the dream sequence one, not the future one. That I didn't have as much problem with. But when he was battling around bad guys, grabbing their gun, I could see if he grabbed somebody and did something that made them contract and shoot off their gun. But I didn't like that he used it as much. But in in Justice League, I really didn't have a problem with him grabbing a ray gun and smacking a parademon down with it. Um, yeah, I, I really thought through the boom tube or something we'd see dark side in some way be disappointed in Steppenwolf or I, I don't know what I expected. I certainly didn't want to mimic what was going on with Thanos where you just get a little glimpse and he grabs the gauntlet or grabs a mother box and says, well, now I'm coming. I, I, but I, I was expecting something of dark side in there. I actually expected dark side to be the main villain in this movie, but uh, well, they're apparently- I sort of did. I, because if I can just for a second, I sure, go right ahead d- again. I pretty much avoided all trailers and everything. And I try, try, try to avoid the toys mm-hmm. as much as I can. It's hard because <laughs> I work at toy store. We have yeah. the, the movie toys. But somebody pointed out, oh, what's this build a figure on the back? Who Steppenwolf? Said, Who Steppenwolf? Oh, I didn't know that he was in a movie. That's how I got ruined for yeah. me. Steppenwolf was in a movie. But I still thought there would be a dark side. And again, I don't project what I think should be in a movie onto it or how I like it or like it or, or don't like it. It's just Oh, and don't get me wrong. Saying all this stuff still did not take away from my enjoyment of the movie at all. I really... I was really pleased at the end of it. I love the soundtrack. I know a lot of Beatle fans have a problem with the way that one song came Come out. Come together. But I no, it's, it's, it's been covered. Uh, 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 yeah, Aerosmith yeah. covered it, for goodness yeah, sake. Yeah, I think, uh, was it Lenny Kravitz? No, that's American Woman by, n- never mind. <laughs> but by, I, I, I didn't have a problem. There was thoughts. also, what, Heroes was covered in yep, the movie as well? Yep. Yeah, that's, I didn't have a problem with I thought it sounded great. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize that Danny Elfman did all the music for it mm-hmm. either. Yep, like so all the other clips, not just the Batman right. snip they he used, quoting but himself and John else. Williams, and yeah, um, that actually I might go buy that album now because I love listening to Danny Elfman's composure of things. Um, just can almost do no wrong when it comes to certain things, and I like his soundtracks. It was nice in the credits seeing all the comic greats. Yes, mentioned. it was. I was a little surprised when they said, you know, Gardner Fox. With created by for Justice League, I thought, wow. I thought it was also like Julie Schwartz would have a mention in there at some point with yeah. the created by. But, you know, Gardner Fox, yeah, he did a lot of heavy lifting with that. But all the other – I, I wish I, I have a screen – I wanted to take a screenshot of that, but I yeah, don't do that I, in a movie theater. But of no. all the I even thought mentioned. after after it got that far and they were doing that with the creators and then the music, there was something else I thought I wanted to see early in the credits that I completely forgot about, so I'll, but, yeah, through. how about that? You got a mention of Jack Kirby with yeah. the fourth world and the DC yep. stuff. Yeah, That was great. There was, a, there was a lot of good in the movie. And and I really hope – I know it's a business and I know everyone looks at the money and the dollars and everything. I really hope they don't shortchange it and cut cut it off at its knees before it's even had a week to see what can happen down the road. I don't want to see them cancel the next one or two Justice League movies just because this one may not have performed as well as certain other movies out there in the world. I think it would be a shame. I think they did that with uh, Birds of Prey TV show. I think that was just starting to get its legs underneath it, and I think if they'd have given it another season, that it would have been... No. Go ahead. I, I, just have, I'm, I'm raising, I have something to say when you're done, then. Would have been, would have been much better, and I, and I don't want to see them do that to this. Yeah, and that's exactly the kind of wrong lesson one would expect Warner Brothers executives to learn from something yeah. like this. But... On the bright side, Wonder Woman oh, shows in the superhero fantastic. movies can you know, be you know, financially successful and critically acclaimed. And I think they're going to at least proceed with a couple more solo superhero movies and then reassess and uh, try maybe a slightly different formula for the next one. And, and I still I'm, don't, I'm pretty sure they will at least do a second. Justice. I still don't begrudge them – is that the right word? Begrudge them from yeah. trying this the way they did with having – Man of Steel turn out to be the first in this movie and then going with a team-up movie and then going to a single Wonder Woman movie and then a Justice League movie. It's a different way to get to the same result and watch this expansive universe grow. I I appreciate the the idea behind doing something other than having an Iron Man, a Thor, a this, a that, and then going into the Avengers. I liked that this came first, and I like that we're going to – Look for an Aquaman movie, a Flash movie, and maybe some Batman movies mm-hmm. down the road. I know everyone, and even me to a certain extent, is Batman out with just Batman solo movies. 
But I also don't mind seeing different people play Batman, mm. and I want to see Ben Affleck get the chance to do that in one solo movie at well, least. Yeah, it wasn't that uh... – I think that might have been one of the reasons why they're searching for a new Batman right now. Because uh, I think Affleck was supposed to like write, direct, and star in his own Batman well, solo picture. Then and that, that took took a backseat to that, and he was just going to star in it. And then all this other crap came out in the last week. Uh, what other crap is that? That he that somebody else might be playing Batman. Yeah, um, and... Something. My guess would be that uh, this his involvement in the solo movie fell through. Yeah. Or just, and, that just uh, resulted in his stepping back from the whole DCEU. A little bit of the Googling got me some of the credits uh, for the, of the comic creators that were shown in the movie. Okay. Of course, you had Bob Kane, Bill Finger with Batman, uh, Joe Suster, Jerry Siegel for Superman, uh, William Moulton Marson for Wonder Woman, uh, Garner Fox, as mentioned, for Justice League, Jack Kirby for The Fourth World, and of course, I think Jeff Johns was, was in there somewhere for, of course, his also the movie mm-hmm. part of it. But the other creators, uh, John Broom, Carmen Infantino, Robert Kaniger, Harry Lampert, Jim Lee, Sean Martinborough, Jack Miller, Grant Morrison, Paul Norris, George Perez, Howard Porter, James Robinson, Greg Rucka, Nicholas Scott, Kurt Swan, Ethan Van Skyver, Len Wein, Mort Weisinger, Marv Wolfman. So It's a good list. Yeah. Yeah, I was very pleased reading that off. Trying to think if there's anything else. I really didn't expect the race to be one of the extra credit scenes. Oh, that was really cool. I thought that they <laughs> that they did that in the movie, and that was just going to be the end of it for a while. But that really was a lot of fun to watch. I love their banter back and forth. Well, if I win, do this. If I win, do that. It was it was very well done. Yeah, c- could I say a word or two about the Flash? Absolutely. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's. I'm kind of. I'm of two minds about the way they went with the Flash here. I mean, on the one hand. Uh, the, he, he did uh, provide some needed uh, levity and some mm-hmm. comedy relief. And Look, there's the bat. Is that, that time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and he's socially awkward because he has no friends. He's much younger than any Flash we have seen Barry Allen be. I mean, this is normally like a Wally West age Flash or, or Bart Allen Flash. Well, not, older than Bart. Older than Bart, but still not Barry Allen like I would think. Mm. Yeah, he's easily the most human of mm-hmm. the group. Um, and I've read a few uh, reviews by professional uh, print media critics, and most of whom hated the movie, um, probably just because they're tired of uh, having to sit through superhero movies. And uh, I think they're just – this one kind of embodies what to them embod- – it embodies the mediocrity, what they see as the mediocrity of the superhero genre, uh, a mediocrity that's becoming more and more prevalent the more movies are made in this vein. And so I think – I see them as kind of scapegoating it, you know, just uh, letting this stand in for all the superhero movies that they grudgingly have to admit are at least in some way well made. This one, they're, they're, it's given them an excuse to take out some of their negative feelings, their boredom, and they're just kind of pouncing on it and dumping on it. But uh, they're all – pretty much unanimously agreeing that Ezra Miller as The Flash is the one part of the movie that they really like. Oh, good. It's, 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 well, Barry in this movie is – he's kind of like – he comes off as like the spastic kid brother of the, as, of the rest of the league. And while it's good that he provides a little bit of comedy and uh, that human touch, you know, and he's the one that uh, gets to show up and react with wonder to all the things that are happening, uh, I think they went a little too far with him. I, I, I'm feeling like he was a little too twitchy, too fragile, too spastic. Spectrum disordered, a little too eccentric, um, and, and also a little too young. I would, I would, uh, I, yeah. he, he doesn't really line up that much with interpretations of Barry that we've seen anywhere else, and I'm not sure he even feels like he's part of the same vision of the Justice League as the other members do. I mean, it's, it's, the, the iconicity of the Flash is uh, detracted from somewhat. Mm-hmm. And I think the... Maybe the reason the critics liked him so much is because the way Ezra Miller's playing him, he kind of subverts uh, the uh, iconic self-importance of the Justice League concept and even the superhero concept by uh, his presence there and how he reacts to being thrust into this heroic role. You know, instead, he's complaining about the different things he's afraid of, the things that trigger him. And, well, he kind of reminds me of a – and this is going to seem a little out of left field, but uh, the Ezra Miller – Ezra Miller Flash seems almost Tim Burton esque to me. I mean, he's this, he's dark haired, he's, he's got dark hair, he's. Uh, yeah. 
I had this whole list of things that uh, justified this observation of mine in my head. Uh, so he's this uh, dark-haired, strange young man who uh, moves like a stop-motion animated puppet. And uh, Danny Elfman music plays when he moves. And uh, he rattles off eccentric dialogue about brunch. You know, it's just it, – it, 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 it's strange. And, and – and, and, and then this isn't all Ezra Miller, of course. Some of it is uh, oh, sure. design yeah. and effect. Uh, I mean, that, uh, there's, there's a scene close to the end of the movie where he's shown running and his, his limbs are flapping in midair, looking all herky-jerky. Yeah. As I watched that, I had the strangest feeling that the Flash was being turned into a puppet. <laughs> yeah. ah, abracadabra. Abracadabra, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that costume, for, for, I, they explained it by saying that he's basically wearing a a wearable spaceship Space, hull right, right. You know, yeah. to prevent friction. But the Flash doesn't need to be wearing an armored costume. He looks like a friggin' action figure. He looked like Ezra Miller could barely walk in that thing, let alone run. He looked like Dot Matrix from Spaceballs <laughs> toddling around. Yeah, that, so the costume certainly didn't work, and so it, it, it affected his performance. It, it kind of reminded me of a cross between, like, Jim Parsons and Paul Rubens. My, my biggest problem with the costume was it looked like he had a bicycle helmet on. I, that might have been by design, it actually. Just, and it might have been. I just don't like it. I, I agree with you. I, I don't think the costume works. It it was it it was sufficient for how the movie turned out, but I still didn't like it. Hmm. I still think it looked very clunky and too much like armor that didn't need to be there. Yeah. Um, I do think that he was less quirky as the movie went on because I do think, and this is something else I liked, again, going with the whole father-son mentor um, student thing, I liked how Batman kind of settled him down and said, just save one person. You don't have to do anything else. Just save one and see what happens. And he did that, and then he realized, oh, all right, well, I can do this. And and through the rest of the movie, he progressed probably a little too quickly to be comfortable with being more of a hero than not. Hmm. But I was okay with it because, again, it, it suited the movie and what they were trying to accomplish with it. Up until that point, I I still liked everything that was portrayed before that, but I think that was a defining moment for him to grow up a little bit in a short period of time and be able to stand up with the rest of the league mm. and have a grander vision like, oh, I could be part of this. This might work. And went through the rest of the movie then. Good point about uh, Batman coaching him along there. And again, something else that Batman would now be open to do more mm. often because I think as we saw with the Batman versus Superman with the Robin – uh, costume being all mm. in a sh- enshrined, I don't know that he would have done that before the end of Batman versus Superman. I think he would have stayed the loner, but now yeah. he's more open to being the mentor again for some. Would have been more likely to just tell Barry to stay on the sidelines, yeah, and not get in my way. But yeah, no, this time he, instead he had some patience with him. It's, yep. Again, it's, just, it's kind of more of a Dick Grayson move than a traditional Bruce it Wayne is. move, but it's a sign that there's some growth yep. on the part of this Bruce Wayne. Yep, and I was okay with it. Mm. Yeah, and I did like the scene between Flash and Cyborg, where they're uh, as as the League newbies, they're kind of being hazed a little oh. bit. They've been relegated to grave digging duty, and that's Barry so observes creepy. that the two of them they're the accidents. That's, yeah, that's what they have in common. So, so there's a bit of chemistry going on there between the two. And and again, me thinking that that was more of a Wally and Vic thing seemed very much more Teen Titans well, yeah. to me than anything else. Oh, great point. Actually, um, I liked how because we know Barry's very awkward and we know he doesn't have friends at this point really at all he wasn't sure how to okay well, can we fist pump oh nope nope we're not there it's, like it's too racially charged yeah. so I, that part worked for me too yeah he's a little bit too twitchy but based on how they brought him in i didn't mind it i thought that scene worked very well yeah. and i also wish that uh, he both of his parents were still alive Oh, I know. Again, that's something we have to thank Jeff Johns for because just thought that uh, Barry needed a more tragic backstory, so he did some time travel hoodoo with Reverse Flash, and suddenly, boom, murdered mother, incarcerated father, and that now has to be leveraged across every platform, other media yeah. interpretation of Barry Allen that we see. That I've accepted it, but I still am not happy with it. Nor am I. That said, I wouldn't have been too upset, and I know a lot of other folks out there in the uh, webosphere agree with me about this, that if they could have just found some way to put uh, the Grant Gustin version of The Flash oh, I know. in here. Yeah. But then we'd get into multiversal complications. Well, see, and that's my hope is that at some point, even if it's just 
a cameo. Like in, in, I think it was the first season of the Flash TV show. You had Flash traveling. No, had to be the second season. I'm sorry. Had to be the second season. You had him traveling to Earth 2. And as he's going through the Speed Force, you get all these other Earths going by. And you had Supergirl. And you had the 90s Flash. And you had this and that. I really hope at some point that that little movie verse just gets, even if it's just a picture as he's going on the cosmic treadmill, which is still in the lab. I don't know why they don't use it once. <laughs> that that comes through because i mean it's it's all owned by warner brothers there there has to be a way just to do it just to mention it just to s- something i could go you uh, one better i could see them having the ezra miller flash show up as for like oh, a, f- a full episode that'd be great in some future season of the cw show that absolutely should happen maybe just as like a cross promotion thing for the next justice league yeah. movie, whenever that happens by then the flash writing staff will probably need the ideas sure sure <laughs> All right, so um, freaking swears. I'm going to give it a four. I was pleasantly surprised, pleasantly surprised, Easy and very entertained. Say. Not really. <laughs> My rating is exactly the same as Chris's. A solid three. Um, I have to give it a two and a half because I sort of like right down the the middle there. And I know I'm always very generous when it comes to Justice League stuff. I'm well, that's, that's fine. Aware that's that. fine. Right? Crap on a cracker, and you'd still. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's very true. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for us here. Uh, we once again want to thank our sponsor, superhero stuff dot com. You can go to for all of your superhero, superhero stuff. stuff. Visit us at ComicGeekSpeak.com. To send us an email, the address is ComicGeekSpeak at gmail.com. To leave a voicemail, the number is 267-702-6642. Stop by TheComicForums.VanillaForums.com and let us know what you thought of the Justice League movie. But boy, oh boy, Facebook is all over the gambit. (laughs) Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. Thank you to everyone who contributes to the show. We could not do it without you, and we appreciate it as always. And, as always, God, I screwed that up. <laughs> we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes one listener at a time. Come together.